Hola. Hola. Bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Bienvenidos. In this uh, video cast, indeed, it's video cast, we are dealing with a suggestion from John Doe. Hola, John. Yeah. And John has asked us to talk about the difference. John Doe. John Doe. I know it's a name that. Uh, is that your real name, John? If it is, fabulous. Wow. It's just, okay. It's what. It's, if something happens to you and then. You're John Doe. John Doe, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They'd be like, hmm. Okay. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> we've got a John Doe in there. <laughs> okay. What if, you, what if you're a woman? Jane Doe? Jane Doe, I think, Jane? yeah. I think that's what they use, yeah. Okay. John and Jane, yeah. Okay. Maybe. Okay, so John has asked us to talk about the difference between uh, Spanish Spanish and, Spanish, Mexican, Spanish. Okay. and Mexican Spanish. Okay. Okay. Entonces, nos vemos en la segunda parte. Muy bien. Okay, Cynthia. Right. Mexican Spanish and Spanish Spanish. First thing. Is there a fundamental difference between the two, do you think? In terms of? In terms of everything, would you say it's like another language? No, 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 no. No. Pronunciation, um, obviously the fe, se. By the way, I have to say that the fe is not a lisp. Okay. <laughs> I must have heard that in the last 13 years about 200 times. Do you Spanish people have a lisp? It's not a lisp. That's a physiological problem that you can't pronounce the se and you say fe. It's not a physical problem, yes? The story is... Otherwise, you would have a lisp as well when okay. you say think or thought or... When I worked in Mexico, I was told this story by a number of people. So it's one of those yes, ones... Yes, the king, yeah? Yeah, that here in Spain there was it's a king true. who had a lisp. And so, so that he people didn't want to make him feel bad. The whole of Spain change the pronunciation to yeah. be the same. Do you think that's going to be the case? Yeah? Uh, no. Let's all change the pronunciation so the yeah. king, <laughs> who's going to be king for whatever years. Yeah, no. if that were the case, then uh, everybody in the UK would start wearing their hair in a really bizarre way yeah. to have it the same as the uh, prime minister. <laughs> and that's not going to happen. So, um, we've got pronunciation. So you said, right, uh, the th... The which is for the, the C and the Z, yeah? Yes. So that one's not there in Mexico, and I, and no. I vouch for that, you know. Yeah. Doy fe. Uh, mm -hmm. That they the, say cerveza. Yes. Um, oh. Ascensor. Mm, zapatos. Zapatos, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 and it, that brings its own problems for them, you know, and it brings problems uh, for yeah. us as well, because yes. then, for example, the word ascensor, in Spanish is ascensor, ascensor, ascensor. So it's got a it's got a sc, which in in Mexican pronunciation or Latin American pronunciation you wouldn't know that there was a c there, yeah. No. So so they have their spelling issues just to hear as in here in Spain they have the spelling issues. They have they have their, our spelling issues and theirs and theirs as well. Yeah, <laughs> extra. All right. So um, any other pronunciation that you would say was different um i mean the the tonality the 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 sound of the language is different yeah it's a different um tone to it yeah it's more um, melodic mexican mexican is very let me give you my, my experience when i learned for the first two years learning mexican spanish understanding the melody and everything like that then i started to talk to spanish speakers and I was, I was, it, it, it was so strong. Spanish from Spain is a very powerful, very, very dynamic uh, pronunciation. The vowels are identical. There are no yes. change in the vowels. No. But it's the, you know, things like the, the J in, over in Mexico, that the J was, was or the GE, GI was soft. Gente, gente, mm -hmm. yeah? Whereas you, you don't hear gente here, not very much. I think um, the warmer the climate, the softer the sounds. Mm. Same in Spain. The, the further down you go, 
at the south, they pronounce more like her instead of he. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, you know, you can find the Latin American accent in the south. It's there. Yes, it's, it's, it's similar. Yes. It's similar, you know, and the Canary Islands, because that was the route when when they were coming from Spain over to Latin America, they, they went through and the Canary Islands was a stop off. And yeah. if you compare the, the accent of the Canary Islands with the Cuban accent, it's yeah. like the Canary Islands. The Cuban or, or a, Venezuela sometimes is a bit like, yeah. yeah, not Cuban, no, I wouldn't say Cuba, I would say Venezuela. But it, when I listen to the Cuban, it's like listening to the Canary Islands with a lot of heat going on. So that they don't, they don't, they don't close their mouth. They always have the like it's they don't. It's too, it's too hot, too hot to talk. Yeah. I think in Cuba they don't pronounce the R and they say an L. Really. Yeah. Mm. So. No me importa. Importa. Ah, but the I mi alma they do that in the south as no, well. No, that's mi arma. Arma. Ah, okay. In the south they make an R instead of an L. Right. And in Cuba they make an L instead of an R. Wow. You're going to hear everything. Um, but in Mexico, we were focusing on Mexico. Yes. We? So pronunciation is softer. There's a, there's a tune to the Mexican, just as it is here in Spain, but there's a tune to the Mexican. It's very um, melodic, like this, yeah? It's, it's not, I mean, if a, if a Spanish person tells you off, you know you're being told off, yeah? If a Spanish person is swearing at you, you know that they're swearing at you, yeah? You should know that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I've, I've, <laughs> had it, I've had it in both countries. But in Mexico, it's kind of, it isn't, it isn't a very aggressive sound. That's what, that's what I found as well. Mm -hmm. um, what about vocab, Cynthia? Um, vocab, yes, we have different words sometimes. I mean, communication is absolutely fine between people from, let's say in this case, Mexico and Spain. Every now and then there'll be a word that you think, I don't know that word. Yeah. Or, or we know the word, but we have a different word. Yeah. 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 But I think most of the common words we know because mm -hmm. of TV or something. So you get to know their vocabulary and I think they know ours. Like, yeah. like they'll know that we say piscina. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, you know, things what? like that. Or alberca. No? Alberca. Alberca. Or yeah. sometimes they say charca. Yeah. You know, it also depend, it depends on the area in Mexico. Yeah. But, um, yes, so we're aware sure. of the differences in most cases. In other cases, we don't. We're not. And quite often, the, the word that they use in Mexico exists here in Spain, but it means something slightly different. For example, uh, gafas. Oh, mm -hmm, yeah. As well. Uh, in Mexico, they say lentes. Uh, but lentes here. Una lente. It's a lens, isn't it? Yeah, a lens. Yeah? Yeah. And for example, um, uh, contact lenses are... Lentillas. Lentillas, yeah? So the, they use that word. The same with, um, here they say for pen, bolígrafo, and over there they say pluma. But yeah. It, or we say bombilla and they say foco, uh -huh. and a foco for us is something different. But bombilla, um, uh, pluma... Pluma... Is the, the, the feather... Fountain... Fountain pen. pen. The fountain mm -hmm. pen, yeah? So it comes from when you used feathers, yeah? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And coche here in Spain and carro there, carro. typically. Carro. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Where here, carro is Carro like a, here is either a, 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 a cart, isn't a it? A pram mm -hmm. for a baby or a shopping trolley yeah. or cart. Yeah. So, I mean, it yeah. could... It could catch you on the hop if you understand the meaning of the word for example in Spain and in Mexico they tell you that word and you're imagining something and it's not <laughs> yeah yes did you own a carro <laughs> yeah so I take you in my push chair uh, no thank you <laughs> like we we're definitely aware of carro in, in yeah. Spain uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah so but my, most the vast majority of the cases it's normal. It's like exactly the same as British and, I don't know, Australian or yeah. American or yeah. Canadian. Or Where there is a big difference uh, is with, with swearing. Okay? There's a, oh, yes. There's a big... They, they, have, they have their swear words and Spain has its swear words. And they're, they're not very similar. I think in every Latin American country, they have their own swear words. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but it seems to me that loads of things, loads of regular day-to-day things are swear words in their country. Yeah. It's like, for us, I mean, if we want to swear, we use specific swearing words, uh-huh. yeah? Uh-huh. But, like, coger. Coger is a big no-no in many Latin yeah, American countries. Many, many, yeah. And for us, it's just to grab or to catch something. You can't say that. Planchar. Planchar is to iron. Well, that's something rude in some country in Latin America. Um, I don't know. I don't remember the other. Uh, pisar um, in one country. Pisar. Uh, another one that was... Um, hacer la maleta. There was something... What was it that... When you were playing that game, hacer la maleta, and there was somebody from Latin America that ah, said that, bo- you can't say that, it's rude. Uh, voy a poner en, en mi maleta, uh, that's what I was okay, saying, she said, I, I, can't, I can't use poner. So it's like, I don't know, they must be, when they talk to us, they must be like, oh my God. And we say coger so much. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I speak to Saul, he laughs, and I'm just like, tienes que coger él. <laughs> I can't even imagine what they must be thinking. Like, oh my god! Mental image that must be creating in the head of, oh my goodness, I've got to do what? Yeah, tienes que coger un taxi. I've got to do what to a taxi? Yeah. Um, and then the last thing are the um, the tenses. Okay. What I saw, what I saw in in Mexico, in the place that I was, and I think it varies on where you are, was that they didn't use. They used the. Um, the present perfect tense, that's the I have eaten, he comido. They use that at, at, in a roundabout the same way as they do in the US, in general. Mm-hmm. I know in some places everybody uses the present perfect without a problem. But in Spain, they tend to use the present perfect in a similar way to this used in the UK, which yeah. is more, which is more so. Yes, you, yeah. you kind of find, find that the US, Canada... And Latin America, particularly Mexico, because it's yeah. actually closer. Um, they have more similarities in terms of language. And structure. Yeah. And um, also because I think Latin American people copy English words and they make yeah. that are not the same in, in Spanish. Yeah. And then Spanish from Spain and British English, if there is a British English, because you've got loads of different English, um, is more similar yeah um amongst them no what would you say more similar uh, with one another i don't know yeah to one Entre another, ellos. Yeah. to one another to yeah. one another yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. you've got like the two kind of uh-huh. um continents so yeah? for example in mexico they for example here cynthia might say to me um que has hecho que has hecho hoy uh-huh. and i used to see it yeah. Hoy. So in English, what did you do today? Yeah, in yeah. English, what would you tend to say? What did you do today, or no, what have, what you, have done? you done today? Right, but maybe in 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 America, they tend to say, "What do you do? What, what did, did you, you do?" do? Today? Yeah, in some areas, I think. Yeah, but in general, it's just in general, it tends yeah. to be the, the present perfect is slightly different. It isn't used as much. Yeah. Saul, the guy that we talked to, our, our um, team member in, in Mexico, he uses the present perfect, yeah. but sometimes not. <laughs> it's sometimes not where I would use it, where I would say, yeah. ooh, I would use the present perfect then, and that's just that, that's just the way that is. Yeah, yeah it's true. But in, in, in terms of structure and everything else, if you learn standard Spanish, you can go anywhere in yeah. any Spanish-speaking country and be understood. You wouldn't have a, a problem, really. I mean... Yeah. If you... If you if you've got a good knowledge of Spanish, you can travel anywhere. Obviously, you'll have to adapt to the vocabulary. Like, okay, I, I have to avoid this word. Yeah. Or they say this word instead. So you would have to adjust that way. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, all you've in got to most do, of the cases... In, if you're going to go to Mexico and you want to fit in, all you have to do is learn three words, which are... No manches way. <laughs> no manches way. No manches way. <laughs> Okay, and you just repeat that after anybody says anything to you, you go, no manches way, no manches way, and it's like, hey, yeah, yeah, that's you, Mexican, through and through, yeah? I was sending a message to my mom the other day, and I wanted to put no no mama, and my mobile, my mobile changed it to no manches. <laughs> Did I tell you? No manches, I was like, what the hell? My, my mobile is Mexican now. <laughs> 
No Manches. It's like No uh, Manches. Yeah. Uh, uh, how is it translate? No Manches. Like no, no way. No, no way, uh, man. No yeah. way, man. Or, or um, ni hablar. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then. And, and for us, manchar has nothing to do with that because manchar is to stain. To stain. Yeah. Don't stain. Don't stain. Mm -hmm. So that's what they say. Don't stain, man. Yeah. And for example, they say <laughs> they say things the like. Pot to the <laughs> the kettle to the pot. <laughs> the kettle to the pot. <laughs> they say, ¿Qué onda? ¿Qué onda? ¿Qué onda? Yeah, and, and here it's more, ¿Qué tal? So it just, they're, they're small things, but, you know. Well, there was a question I didn't understand once when somebody said to me, ¿Dónde radicas? And I was like, Oh, what yeah, the? I remember that. ¿Dónde radicas? And I was like, what is that? What is, what is radicar? I had no, I didn't have a clue where I do what, where I <laughs> radico. And then, so I had to look it up, and it was, where do you live? Or where, wow. And it was, where, ¿dónde radicas? Wow. Okay. And uh, somebody from Mexico. So okay. I was like, okay. So That's differences, <laughs> exactly. Differences amongst a, a lot of, 95% the same, 5% different. And it's a 5% that can catch you up. Yeah. Entonces, eso es todo, chicos. Muchísimas gracias, jo, John Doe, <laughs> John por Do. eh, la sugerencia. <laughs> y entonces. Hang on a minute. Have you made Have you made up John Doe? No, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna do yeah. this topic. No, John no. Doe has no, asked us. No. Truly, John Doe sent that message. So, uh, ahora nos vamos. Y nos vemos. Hasta, eh, eh, eh. Adiós. Hasta luego. I was gonna say, John Doe, please write a message uh, just to prove that you exist. <laughs>